You know what people really hate? Opinions! You know what people hate even more? Opinions about Pokémon! So let's talk about mine. Shiny Pokémon are always considered a badge of honor to any Pokémon trainer worth their boots, especially Shiny Hunters. And since I'm a rookie Shiny Hunter myself, I figured, why not put my own two cents into the topic? And since I've already wasted three months of my life Shiny Hunting Lugia in Soul Silver, I figured I got nothing to lose. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? One thing to keep in mind is that things like stats, move pool, mythos, and competitive viability will not influence the placement of the Pokémon on this list. Also keep in mind that while my opinion on the Pokémon itself may come up from time to time, that also does nothing to influence the Pokémon's placement on the list. Unless it's Embor. Now with that being said, enough stalling, let's get this show on the road. Ninetales. A lot of Gen 1 Shinies aren't really that great in my opinion, but Ninetales is one of the ones that stand out to me. The grey color scheme coupled with the blue tip in its tail gives it a kind of ghostly vibe, which is a bit of a funny coincidence since it learns a couple ghost type moves. Another thing worthy of note is that Ninetales and Arcanine are version exclusives back in gold and silver, with Arcanine being gold and Ninetales being silver. I love little touches like that, and you'll probably be seeing more of that throughout this list. <laughs> Sneasel. I'm normally not one who's a big fan of pink shinies, but I think Sneasel actually rocks it pretty well. I see a lot of people hate on this shiny line for not fitting, and while I certainly agree with that when it comes to Weavile, with Sneasel, I think it actually looks pretty good. To me, it shows that Sinister can take any color, and that includes pink. Kind of like Yuno Gasai from Future Diary. I can definitely still see Sneasel shiny as Sinister. Especially with that image in my head. And I think the yellow on its... Feathers? Seriously, what are those? Is a nice contrast. I think those colors fit each other well for Sneasel. Now if only it did the same thing for Weavile. What a shame. on this list for one simple reason. Eevee was my first shiny. I still remember hunting this thing in Gen 7. And yes, it took me until Gen 7 to actually get a legit shiny. Shut up. Leave me alone. I don't need your pity. But that aside, I actually think Silver looks really good on Eevee. Not sure why, but it just looks natural. And it even matches his Game Boy color scheme, which is something I only just noticed after searching for pics of Shiny Eevee. I've only been Shiny hunting for about a year now, so the fact that I can call Eevee my first Shiny is something I can take pride in. Now the fact that it took this long for me to get a legitimate Shiny is another thing entirely. SHUT UP I'M NOT CRYING! YOU'RE CRYING! Don't need your goddamn pity. Just, let's just move on. <laughs> Salazzle. Coupling the fact that Salazzle is already a pretty aesthetically pleasing Pokémon, and then you add its great shiny on top of that, you just get perfection. I'm not kidding, this shiny looks amazing. 
It's a pretty simple change, turning its main color from black to white. But if anything, I think this change just makes Salazzle more desirable. Salazzle is already the seducing mistress of the Pokémon universe, so giving it the white color scheme makes it look even better. What? Don't look at me like that! Look at its Pokédex entries! You literally can't talk about this Pokémon without mentioning that! I mean, it has reverse harems for crying out loud. This is what I could truly call a sexy shiny. God, this is getting awkward. NEXT! <laughs> Nido King. Nidoking is a very popular shiny, and it's very easy to see why. Just something about blue shinies makes it look so sleek and cool. But Nidoking stands out among the rest simply because of the attention to detail. The color scheme is very similar to that of its counterpart, Nidoqueen. I love this kind of detail so much, it's intoxicating. No pun intended. Royal Blue also just seems to fit a kingly Pokémon like Nidoking. It really suits its body well. Now if only Nidoqueen did the same thing! Ugh, so much missed potential. Come on, Game Freak, what are you doing? <laughs> Rose Raid. I already really like Rose Raid, but the instant I saw its shiny form, I'm like, I want this. I want this now. The roses turning from red and blue to purple and black, and its body ever so slightly changing its tint of green to a more yellow, natural looking color. And you got a shiny that's definitely worthy of its reputation. It also doesn't help that purple is my favorite color, so... That definitely gives it brownie points in my book. This Pokemon is definitely on the top of my list on next Pokemon to Shiny Hunt. Just you wait, Rose Raid. Just you wait. You will be mine. is one of those shinies that you're gonna need shades for, cause oh my god, those bright colors! I mean, Ho-Oh is based off of a phoenix, so it makes sense, but Jesus, tone down the coloring on this one a little bit, will ya? But you know what, I can't blame the developers for going overboard, because this is still a great shiny. Ho-Oh was known as the Rainbow Pokemon, and while its regular form certainly shows a bunch of different colors reminiscent of a rainbow, its shiny form definitely takes the appearance of a stereotypical phoenix. Once upon a time as a wee lad, I hacked my Soul Silver game to get me one of these babies. That right there should tell you how much I love this shiny. The orange and red on its wings symbolizing the flames are pretty cool, but my favorite part is the white on the head and its tail. It feels like those parts of it are blotted out, and the wings are trying to pick up the slack, and its whole body is about to burst with color. I hope I'm not the only one with this picture in my head. But if I am, it wouldn't be the first time. This one is also definitely on my to hunt list. One day I will get a shiny ho oh that I'm proud of! Gardevoir. Now this one might not change much compared to other entries on this list, but what does change really makes a difference in my eyes. Gardevoir is this high for a reason. The orange and blue really look good, especially the blue on its head. It makes me think that it ought to be an anime character, but what puts this Pokemon up so high for me is its Mega Form. Gardevoir's shiny Mega Form is incredible. Not only does it keep the blue hair, but its dress also becomes black. 
which is a great contrast to its normal mega form. It's like the original Gardevoir is dressed for a wedding, but the shiny Gardevoir is dressed for a funeral. It's really kind of sad when you think about it. But what doesn't make me sad is this adorable shiny. Milotic. Milotic is already one of my favorite Pokemon ever, so add this shiny form on top of that, and you have an incoming fanboy ready to come to your house and shake the shit out of your hand. Developers, you did good. I especially love the contrast between its blue hair and its red antennae, and the colors on its tail just makes it seem so majestic. And I mean more majestic than it already is. This was the second Pokemon that I shiny hunted, and... There's a good reason for that. I love this shiny. And I always will. Now why don't we give Milotic a mega form, huh? Come on, Game Freak, you know you wanna. You almost did it with Flygon, I'm sure you could do it with Milotic too. Before I reveal number one, let's go over a few honorable mentions that I wanted to put on the list, but didn't quite make it. Eiji Slash. It's one of Gen 6's most popular shiny Pokemon for a reason. The black and red on the blade just makes it look absolutely stunning. If I was gonna hunt any Pokemon in Gen 6, it would definitely be this one first. Quagsire. It was my first random shiny. Umbreon. The changes are very subtle, but it works. The blue rings look very nice, and I love that its yellow eyes are a reference to its Gen 2 sprite. Whatever happened to yellow eyed Umbreon anyway? Espeon. Many people rag on this shiny, but I actually think it looks pretty good. Yes, lime green shinies are hated the world over, and it looks pretty atrocious on quite a few Pokemon, but I wouldn't classify Espeon as one of them. It may not look very good in its sprites, but look at its 3D model, and you'll see what I mean. I think this shade of green actually looks pretty good on Espeon. Although, it is my favorite Pokémon, so I might have a bit of bias there, which is the reason why it's not on the list. Deoxys. Out of all the gold shinies in the entire Pokédex, Deoxys was always my favorite. Considering that Deoxys already looks so otherworldly, and put the color gold on top of it, and we have a shiny that I think is pretty underrated. Seriously, why don't I hear more people talk about this one? Now, if only you could fucking get it! Salamence. Another green shiny that I think is underrated. Sure, it's not the best color that they could have used, but I think it fits pretty well with the dragon typing. Whenever I see this thing, I always think of Aquamentis from Zelda. This is also another one of the Pokemon that I hunted, so there's that. Greninja. Despite how much I despise this Pokemon, I can't deny how glorious its shiny looks. Black and red are already a great combination of colors, see shiny Charizard and Zoroark. But when you add those colors on a Pokemon that represents a ninja, then you have one very well thought out shiny. There, I said something good about Greninja, don't get used to it. Dragon. On top of Generation 5 being my favorite generation, I think Gen 5 had a lot of the best shinies, my favorite of which being Hydreigon. It keeps its black coat, green skin, and purple stripes. It's like Game Freak took all three of my favorite colors and slapped it on one of the best dragon types in the game. Seriously, I love this shiny. And on top of being my three favorites, I actually think these three colors go very well together and then put them on a three-headed dragon? Are you serious? It works. It, it just works. And it probably won't be too long before I hunt this. Thank you all for joining me. This was something a little different, so tell me what you thought in the comments below. 
and tell me your top 10 favorite Pokemon. I want to get a discussion going. Anyway, thank you all for joining me. I've been Scourge Blade Zelda, and I'll see you all next time. Peace! One thing to keep in mind is that things like stats, move pool, mythos, and competitive viability will not influence the Pokemon it will not influence the placement of the Pokemon on this list. Why can't I say that? I mean I've already wasted three months of my life trying to catch a Shadow Shadow Lugia? What the fuck is this? XD? Although the Although my opinion on the Pokemon itself will come from time to time, it is also not a factor in contributing to my placement on... To my placement? What, am I putting myself on the list? Am I a Pokemon now? Okay. Whatever. Okay, me. You do you. Number nine! What was number nine again? <laughs> Eevee was my first shiny, and by first shiny, I mean first shiny. Huh? That made no goddamn sense. Put that aside. Put that aside. I actually think silver looks really good on Eevee. Now how about we give Milotic a meta a meta? What are you just gonna put a Meta Knight mask on it? Doesn't even have hands. Oliver, do you mind? I'm trying to record a thing. Can you like do your cat things somewhere else? Please? For me? Why? Why do you do this to me? As much as I despise this Pokemon, I can't guarantee how amazing its shiny looks.